What's up, everybody? Just wanted to do a little addendum to the lecture last week about feature engineering, a couple topics that I think uh, weren't as clear as maybe they should have been, so I thought I'd make you this video. In case you're not in the class and you found this some other way, I'll put a link to the video below, so go and check that out. The first we're going to talk about using a bag of words to get a collection of features, and in the second section we're going to talk about applying those features to examples and just kind of show how all the pieces fit together. So here's an example, bag of words. Let's say you have these four messages on the left, and those are your little SMS messages that are the training set that we're going to be talking about. So you want to take that training data and somehow turn that into features, a vector of features to use as input to your machine learning system. So the bag of words approach just takes every single token that appears in all of those messages and just throws them into a bag. And that's why it's called a bag of words. And I have an ellipse of words because I didn't have a bag icon, or maybe I, I guess I could have had a bag icon, I just didn't care that much. But So there's the bag of words. Um, every word that appears in your entire training data, sometimes that's called the vocabulary, the entire vocabulary of your data set. So then what you would do is take each word in the bag of words and turn that into one potential feature. So x1 will be uh, 1 if a message has the word a in it, and 0 if the word message does not have the word a in it. x2 will be a 1 if the message has the word word in it, and a 0 if the word does not have the word, or the message does not have the word in it. You can see that these different instances of word kind of collapse down into a single feature. So even though there might be multiple copies of a word in the training data, you end up with a single feature in the uh, feature vector that you end up with. So that's one feature per unique token. That's what I just said. Come on, get with the program. Here we go. So now what do you do with this? So you have the original training data that uh, we started with. You have the features that we selected using the bag of word technique, and then we want to produce the training vector. And as I said, you know, you just fill in the ones and zeros. So each message has a one for each word that it has. There you go, perfect and beautiful. Now, if you want to apply a model that you built with this feature set at runtime, what you have to do is get test one here as a test message that you want to apply your model to. So some features for a text example. Not the best sentence I've ever written, but you know this is an example. So x1 is associated with the word a. Does this message have an a in it? Yeah, it does, so you'd have a one there. Um, then you would go on, word is not there, zero, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let me just erase these things and advance it. You can see that this message just has three words that are set to one in the test vector, the test x, and all the rest of them are set to zero. Now you'll notice that there's this word example. An example doesn't appear in any of the training examples, and there's no feature for it. So in some sense, part of this test message disappears. You're not able to use it at all in your model. That's called an out-of-vocabulary word, and all you just do is ignore it. So you use bag of words like this when you have a lot of training data and you can use many features. So you, you have a simple model and you're able to train on tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of features, so you don't have too much out-of-vocabulary stuff. It can be very effective. And, um, if you go and watch the full lecture, you'll see where we talk about doing feature selection so that you can pare down this bag of words into a more manageable set when you need to. So go click that lecture and, and watch if you want to. Now I'm going to give a really simple example of a pattern of doing this in practice. So you have the training context, which in the previous slide was the messages, the training time messages, and you have the labels on your training data. This is the raw data you're going to use to do featureization and feature selection with. So you're going to have a training time featureization process that looks at the raw data, selects the words, creates the vocabulary you're going to use. Um, maybe you use the training Y along with something like mutual information to figure out which words, which parts of the vocabulary have the most information about the concept that you're trying to model. And what this outputs is this thing I'm calling featureized data. And now the featureized data is uh, everything you need to turn a new message into a feature vector using whatever process that you use to featureize your training data. This could include things like the words that you selected, so you know the vocabulary, which n-grams you selected, um, and 
not only that, but the the index into the feature vector for each word or n-gram. So you know, like the word a is associated with x one, and you know where to put the you know you know where to put the mark if you see that in your test data. Another thing that might be in your feature data is something like TF IDF weights. So instead of putting a one or a zero, you might put a weighted value. And again, go watch the lecture if you want to know what that means. Um, and then the final thing is if you have numeric variables like um, the length of a message, you're going to want to include the normalization parameters that you learned on the training data so that you can apply those same normalization parameters from the training data at runtime to your test data, etc. So now you have a runtime context X, like your model is running in somebody's phone, they get an SMS spam message or an SMS message, and you have to determine if it's spam or not. So what you do is you take this featureized data, the vocabulary, the parameters, and everything, and run it through a runtime version of the featureization engine. That it's not it's not exactly the same as this because this produces that and this version uses that. But here you'll come out with the actual feature vector that you're going to use as input for your machine learning at runtime. So there's a quick overview of feature engineering, bag of words. Hopefully that cleared a few things up. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next week.